Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm taking my first proper look at the Daystate Delta Wolf. But first up, I'm heading out on a roving hunt in the woods. Right, I'm out in the woods today and uh, still targeting grey squirrels but I'm just doing it slightly differently from usual. So instead of using a feeding station to draw them in, I'm heading out for a bit of a mobile session. Now the truth is that the trees are really heavy with acorns and beech mast at this time of year and that's just drawing the squirrels away from my feeders but rather than giving up while they're tucking into that natural banquet, I thought I'd head out on the move and see if I can't account for a few that way. I don't expect this sort of hunt to yield the same sort of bags as a couple of hours in the hide targeting those feeders, um, partly because the trees are still pretty much in full leaf and it's going to be really difficult to spot those squirrels. Um, it's also going to be tricky for Nikki to spot them and get on them with the video camera, so rather than us trying to sort of communicate with each other and giving the squirrels time to get away, what I'm going to try to do is film them through my phone via the side shot mount that I've been using a lot this year and hopefully that will enable us to show you those kills. Now I don't expect they're going to be as slick as, as Nikki's camera work but it's better than missing the action. Um, my gun choice for today is sub 12 foot pound FX impact mark 2 and that's in 2.2 calibre. Now it's a gun that I've been using very frequently in the hide but also being so light, it should also lend itself pretty well to a roving shoot like this. Also, being recoilless, it shoots very accurately off of the trigger sticks that I'm carrying today. Um, quite frankly, any support I can get from using a rest will be gratefully received. Right, let's get on with it. As I make my way through the woods, I'm keeping my eyes peeled for signs of squirrels. It could be the flick of a tail or a bouncing branch where one is scurrying about. It also pays to listen very carefully. Squirrels often give themselves away with their chattering call and it's even possible to hear the click of their claws on bark. Well, that's what you want. Squirrels up feeding in the oak tree. Froze, gave me a nice clear shot, about 30 meters. I've walloped it in the head, brought it straight down. Let's get it picked up. Through the head, mate. With one in the bag, there's only one thing to do, and that's crack on and try for another. Well, this little plantation is a very good and very sad example of why it is so important to keep grey squirrel numbers under control. Now, everybody knows, or most people know, 
that they're largely responsible for the decline of red squirrels. Um, they also have a huge impact on other native wildlife such as dormice, but also they're incredibly destructive to woodland through their bark stripping. Now this plantation is several hundred, uh, several hundred trees. They're probably about 25 years old, mostly oak, and there isn't one of them that hasn't been badly damaged by squirrels. Now, there are, there are lots like this poor specimen that's just been completely killed. Others with tops snapped out. Others that look like they're on their way to being dead. And simply by stripping the bark, nutrients can't flow up and down the tree between the roots and the leaves and the sections of the tree that have been bark stripped die, so the top usually snaps out, or in extreme cases, the tree is completely killed. Now, obviously, if the woodland's managed for timber, it's disastrous, but it's also disastrous for wildlife because through not reaching, these, uh, through not reaching maturity, these trees don't provide the food and habitat that they would for native wildlife. So it really is an all-round disaster. It's an introduced species and we really do need to do all that we can to thin them out and ultimately get rid of them. I'm using roving tactics but it's important to stop every so often because it's much easier to pick up on those sights and sounds that give away the whereabouts of squirrels when you're not crunching through the woods. It's also a good idea to look back along the area you have already walked through as squirrels often freeze and then start to move again when they think the danger has passed. Now this is a promising looking spot. Um, you'll probably have noticed while I've been stalking around, I've been sticking to the rides. Now that's for several reasons. Firstly, because the trees are cleared to obviously open up these rides, you get less leaf litter, so it's a little bit quieter underfoot. But also, because of that clearing, you get more light coming in on the rides, and therefore more fruit, more nuts and berries in the trees, and that's why it's so heavy with acorns around these areas. Um, also, that little bit of extra light does tend to make it a bit easier to spot squirrels. But this spot is exceptionally heavy with acorn, acorns. They're all over the deck here. Just a little way back, I've also spotted loads and loads of beech mast. Now, I've not actually seen any squirrels here, but I think you can bet that there will be with this much grub around. So what I'm gonna do now is settle in somewhere, be quiet for a while, and hopefully we'll be able to ambush one or two. I've uh, tucked myself in against a tree just off of that ride, close to where we saw all those acorns. There's also quite a few beech trees around here, so lots and lots of beech mast. Um, I'm not going to bother wearing a head net. I don't think it's going to be necessary. I think as long as I keep still and quiet, with this amount of grub around, the squirrels will soon be out. Apologies in advance for the quality of that footage because that squirrel was scrabbling around in the beech tree. I didn't have time to mess about focusing. Got the shot. Hopefully it's good enough quality for you to see that it was walloped straight in the head. It's dropped like a stone. Uh, it leads me to an interesting point actually. Now I get a lot of questions about ammunition choice and what kind of ammo I use. Now quite frankly it doesn't make too much difference. The important thing is that the ammo suits your gun. Now this gun at the moment is shooting very well with uh, Air Arms Diablo Field, uh, range, uh, range Master Sovereign pellets, that sort of typical JSB domed pellet. It's shooting really sweet. So 
My advice is don't get too caught up in the complexities of pellet design. Get on the range and practice and find which pellet your air gun shoots most accurately with. Now, precision is the absolute key. If you hit your quarry right in the skull, it's not going to matter what sort of pellet you're using, it's going to be stone dead. Couldn't get on that one initially. It was clambering around behind the leaves, trying to get to the acorns, I think. But eventually emerged, I didn't have time to hang around. And again, another headshot squirrel. Um, I thought this area would be worth a few squirrels. I'm having to be patient, but I'm getting a few shots. Right, I'm afraid we're going to have to pack up earlier than we'd hoped. It's gone really dark, the forecast for heavy rain and it's just starting to spot. Now Nicky doesn't want to get the camera gear soaked understandably and to be honest, squirrels don't tend to move very much when it's chucking it down with rain. Um, but at least we've managed to bag a few and hopefully I've managed to show you that it is possible to get out and get a few squirrels when the woods are full of natural food like they are at the moment and they're not coming to your feeding stations. A nice session in autumn woodland there. Next up, I'm getting to grips with the Daystate Delta Wolf. Well, here it is at last, the Daystate Delta Wolf. Now, Daystate has a reputation for pushing the boundaries of air gun design, and this air gun certainly does that. It is absolutely loaded with features. I'm gonna do my best to cover all of them today and show you how it shoots on the range and then we'll hopefully make some more videos looking at some of the features in more detail in the future. The Delta Wolf's real selling point is its electronic wizardry. But before we delve into that, let's look at some of its other great features. It's a typical tactical bullpup design that's very popular at the moment. This is the 60 centimetre barrel model, which measures 84 centimetres in total and tips the scales at about 3.7 kilos. This is the black version, but it's also available in a Cerakote finish. The large carbon fibre bottle serves as the forend, although the review gun is fitted with an extended bipod rail from PRS. Standard models have a shorter Picatinny rail beneath the bottle, accessory rails on either side of the barrel and one on the underside of the butt section. The scope rail is also of the Picatinny type and offers plenty of clamping space. It sits on top of a longer dovetail rail and after slackening off the four attachment screws, it has about 15 centimeters of travel backwards and forwards, which means you can set it up with perfect eye relief, either for conventional or close eye relief scopes. It's a really neat feature. Excellent trigger attack comes courtesy of an AR style pistol grip, which can easily be swapped out for a different design should you want to change it. The cheek piece has a nice comfortable curved face, the one on the review gun is on a PRS riser, which is another really handy accessory. It can easily be swapped from left to right, and it sits on the same rail as the scope rail, which gives you a really useful degree of adjustment forwards and backwards. Daystate has invested a lot of time and effort into barrel development over recent years, and apart from being extremely accurate, the barrel on the Delta Wolf can also be changed quickly and easily. Now that means you have the potential to shift between 177, 22, 25 and 0.30 calibre. 
Now, I intend to make another video showing you the whole process very soon, but trust me, it is pretty easy. Now for the really neat stuff. On the left-hand side of the buttstock is a touch screen. Now in normal use, that shows regulator pressure and your chosen mode, along with pellet, caliber, and barrel type, along with battery level and your chosen muzzle velocity. The Delta Wolf effectively has an electronic brain which works in unison with a chronograph located within the carbon barrel shroud. Every time you take a shot, muzzle velocity is recorded and displayed in feet per second. To make adjustments to the gun setting, you need to unlock it by switching on the safety catch to safe, opening the side lever and holding the trigger down for about three seconds. Swipe to the left and you scroll to factory shot setting. Tap the screen to select this mode and you can then input caliber, pellet weight, barrel length and muzzle velocity. The boffins at Daystate have done all of the hard work and set up profiles that ensure optimum performance for the settings that you choose. More adventurous shooters can swipe on to advanced shot setting. This enables you to set up your own profiles, even adjusting voltage and hammer pulse length for fine tuning. You can create and save numerous profiles of your own and swap between them to suit different calibers, different ammo, or even just different shooting scenarios. The electronic wizardry even features advanced velocity technology, which makes constant adjustments to deliver remarkable consistency. Further menus enable you to set magazine shot count, choose between day and night mode, set the auto power off time and switch the chrono on and off. Daystate has developed a higher capacity magazine system which delivers 13 shots in 177, 11 in 22, 10 in 0.25 and 8 in 0.30. The Delta Wolf even features a really clever tandem system which effectively doubles shot count. You can load two magazines at once and then shunt the full one straight into position as soon as you've emptied the first one. Loading up the magazine is easy. Simply flip forward the magnetic front cover, rotate the inner drum clockwise as far as it will go and then load a pellet into each of the bays. It helps if you load the bottom one first to then hold that inner drum still under its own spring tension. The magazine can then be inserted from either side or of course from both sides if you want to take advantage of that double loading system. A very slick side lever action drives the magazine. It's well positioned, features a nice chunky drop down handle and can be swapped over for left handers. In short, it's a brilliant mechanism that quickly becomes instinctive to use. I'm very fussy about triggers, but I'm a big fan of Daystate's two-stage electronic unit. The match type blade on the Delta Wolf is adjustable for angle and length of pull, and let off is adjustable for weight and length. Get the crisp let off on this one to your liking and you will struggle to go back to anything else. Above and behind the trigger blade sits the safety catch with switches on either side of the gun. It's safe when it's in the horizontal position and you simply thumb it down and around when you're ready to take the shot. It has a very positive operation and a bit of a click to it, but I don't think it's loud enough to bother hunters. Shot capacity will obviously vary considerably depending on what caliber or power output you choose. Now this review gun is a 2-2 churning out over 60 foot pounds on full output. Nonetheless, it's still returning about 50 shots from a 240 bar fill. Sub 12 foot pound models should return around 500 shots. Remaining air pressure is displayed on a clear gauge on the side of the stock. Refilling with air is by means of a supplied extended foster connector that plugs into an inlet that's concealed by a neat little magnetic cap. As for battery life, I've not even had a chance to give this one a full charge yet, but Daystate says it should be good for about 5,000 shots. Recharging is very simple. Simply plug in a C-type USB into the socket at the front of the butt section. 
That's a very quick spin through the main features of the Daystate Delta Wolf. It's stopped raining now, so let's head across to the range and I'll show you how it shoots. Well, I cannot argue with that. We've got an absolutely flat calm, windless day today. And as I've got a high power model here, I decided to push the range out from our usual 30 meter test out to 50 meters, five shot group there. That's got to fall within half an inch from center to center. And that's with pellets straight from the tin on one of the factory profiles. And I've literally just had a quick zero up. Um, this gun, obviously, again, being high power, it does have a bit of a bark to it. I've put the 0 dB silencer on there. That's muted it down nicely. Um, the nice thing is the electronics are doing all of the complicated stuff. It's a really nice gun to shoot, and I've just been able to get on and enjoy shooting it. Now, obviously, as far as all those electronics go and all of that tech, that really needs to be seen by the test of time. But for now, I am very happy with how that turned out. So that's our first look at the Daystate Delta Wolf. It really is a remarkable air gun that offers the shooter an unrivaled level of control and adjustability. Of course, all that tech does come at a cost and prices start at around two and a half thousand pounds. Now that is a really significant outlay, but if you can justify it, it buys you about the most technologically advanced air gun on the planet. I'm looking forward to getting to grips with it a little bit more over the coming weeks and months and showing you some of its features in more detail in the future. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all we've got time for this week, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.